Our gracious dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the gift of life. And we are so grateful that you gather each and every one of us from different places here. And we seek your face and uh, we want to hear from you and also have a fellowship with one another and also to fix our eyes on the cross of Calvary. And this morning, and we ask for the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit to speak to our heart and our mind. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, happy Sabbath. Um, it has been uh, good to come together and then listen to the word of God. And um, I'm so grateful that God gave us a new opportunity for each and every one of us to listen to the word of God. And this word is the word that created this world and also the word that can heal and is very powerful uh, because we have seen in the Bible and uh, how this world has been created and so many things has been really happened by only saying a word. And this morning we will going to explore the word of God together for only a short period of time. As we do before and before we open the page of the scripture, and we need to pray and we need to ask the guidance of the Holy Spirit to be with each one of us so that God will get to speak to our heart. Um, so let's pray. Our gracious dear Heavenly Father, and you know each and every one of us coming before you to listen to your word. And this morning, and we ask the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst and help us to realize your truth. May flesh and blood remain silent and your Holy Spirit speak to us. And please forgive our sins and all of our trespasses, Lord. And we ask and also we believe in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the end time events that has been mentioned in the Bible is in the book of Matthew 24. And if you listen, to, uh, if you read the Matthew 24, and you can see like every and every description about the end time. But there is a one particular uh, verse that when Jesus was just referring to some very important event that was happened in the Old Testament. And he was saying like this, and if you go to the book of Matthew chapter 24, and we will going to read from verse 34. Today we will going to quite read um, what has been written in the Bible and several Bible verses. I think it is very important for our uh, time. It says Matthew 24 and from verse 37. It says, but as the days of Noah where so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood there were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And verse 39 says, and did not know until the flood come and it took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So I will going to just pause on this uh, uh, verse right now. And uh, why Jesus was just mentioning, especially the, uh, the period of Noah. At some point, and Luke also just added a little description where he is also mentioning about Sodom and the Gomorrah um, when he was just referring to the end time. And why this is really very important and why we really need to really talk about, or at least how it has been compared Noah's time in our time. Because, you know, there are so many things that has been changed, right, in the Old Testament, and if you see even the technology, and so many things that has been different than in the Old Testament period and then in our time. And why Jesus make this comparison? I think it's very important, uh, because in order to understand the Noah's time, and we have to go back to the book of Genesis where it all started. Now, if we go to the book of Genesis in chapter 7, 
maybe before chapter 7, we can read chapter 6. And then I will going to read a few paragraphs from the Patriarch and Prophets book as well about this uh, time. And then I will read from Genesis chapter 6, and I will going to read from verse 5, 6, 7, and then 8. It's, it reads, Then the Lord saw that the weakness of man was great in the earth, that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created, from the face of the earth, both man and the beast and creeping thing, the birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. And verse 8, but no have found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, if you see when the, this description um, of the human uh, morality and all of the ethics that were at that time was evil continually, even the intent and every imagination of that person that existed at that time was evil continually. That was the description how it has been written in the, in the book of Genesis. Now, before God executed this plan, he sent a man called Noah, which we know in the chapter 7, in the next chapter, and you can see how the thing has been a little bit different. So God didn't put things all the way to the rush. So he gave them 120 years so that they can listen to the message of to the Lord. You can really imagine how 120. Of course, at that time, people are living a longer a period of time. Look, in our, in our time, let's say if the average of uh, human's age, if we call it like 60, then this is going to be on the second generation, Right? So he gave them 120 years to listen to this warning message. And there is only one man is preaching this. But at that time, I was just reading this uh, uh, Patriarchs and the Prophets book in chapter 7. At that time, there were the philosophers, as we have at that time. There are like intellectual peoples at that time where they are kind of like doing scientific forecasting and then saying that, what this man, old man, was saying is a feeble. It's not something really, something is going to be happen. Maybe I will read the description. Uh, I have it on my phone. And, uh, yeah, and this is a Patriarch and a Prophet in chapter 7. It's uh, page 103, and this is a paragraph 2. I think it's very, very sweet uh, when we hear this. It's sweet in the sense that it will going to give us the glimpse how it looks like at that time. It says, in Noah's day, philosophers declared that it was impossible for the world to be destroyed by the water. So now there are men of science who endeavor to show that the world cannot be destroyed by fire that this would be in consistence with the law of nature. But God of nature, the maker and the control of her laws, can cause the work of his hand to serve his own purpose. You know, they are just putting some scientific evidence and then saying that the world cannot be destroyed by water. Probably at that time, we cannot see, at least in the, in the, uh, in the book of Genesis, that there is no such thing like a big water is going to be, have a power to destroy like everything at that time. So those philosophers, but you can also see that when they say this, by default, or the other flip side is that they heard the message of this man called Noah. And then they said that this will not going to be happen. And then... When God started executing his plan, and then something happened which this world or this planet ever, ever seen since it has been created. 
If we go to the book of Genesis, and this is going to be chapter 7, And then I will begin to read from verse 18. And this is how it reads. The water prevailed and greatly increased on earth. And the ark moved about the surface of the water. And the waters prevailed exceedingly on earth. And all the high hills, imagine, all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. And the waters prevailed 15 cubits upward, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and the beast and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every man. And verse 22 and 23, it reads, All in whose nostrils was a breath of the spirit of life, all that was in the dry land died. So he destroyed all the living things which were on the surface of the ground, both man, cattle, creeping thing, and the birds of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. Now, what we will going to learn, it is going to be one of the unsuccessful uh, gospel campaign that ever recorded in the Bible, right? Because imagine you preached for 120 years, but you couldn't catch anyone. I mean, outside of his family, I'm just referring to. And you can clearly see that how people are really stiff-naked at that time. A warning and then after warning and after warning for 120 years. And people are rejecting this message. And especially this old man. And then people are just died. I will going to read the description of that event and how it looks like. And this is still on the chapter 7 of the same uh, book, Patriarch and Prophets. And then I will read. Um, yeah, I, this is how it reads. A noise as of the rushing wind was heard. This is the initial when it starts. And the low, the birds were flocking from all directions, their numbers darkening the heavens. So their numbers are really darkening the heavens. And in perfect order, they passed into the ark. Animals obeyed the command of God while men were disobedient. And then what happens? On the eighth day, after, the, after Noah just told, um, after God told to Noah that they need to enter to the ark, and then after that, on the eighth day, and then listen to the description. It's really, really very scary. Even I cannot really comprehend in my mind. It says, But upon the eighth day, the dark cloud overspread the heavens, then followed with muttering of thunder and a flashing of lightning. Soon, a large drop of rain began to fall. The world had never witnessed anything like this. And the hearts of men were struck with fear. All were secretly inquiring, can it be that Noah was right? And they were just asking one another, can what that man was saying might be right? And uh, that the world is doomed to destruction? And then darker and darker grow the heavens, and fast come the falling of the rain. And the beasts were roaming about in the wild terror. And uh, their discord cries seems to mourn out of their own destiny. The fate of man, the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the winds of heaven were opened. Water appeared to come from the clouds, in the mighty contract. 
Rivers were broke out from their boundaries and overflowed the valleys. And the jet of water burst from the earth indescribable force. And now, and then it says, the beast exposed to the tempest rushed toward this man as though expecting help from him. Some of the people, and this is a description that, uh, that even is very scary, and this is how it reads. Some of the people bound their children and themselves upon powerful animal just to skip from all of those what's going on in this I, it, it, has, it is not described here which animals it is maybe I can just uh, thinking of those uh, like animals who are really very giant at that time and then they bound themselves to those animals and then their children to skip what is going to be happen because of the fear Knowing that these were the tenets of life and uh, would climb the heights of the point to skip the rising water. And some fastened themselves to lofty trees on the summit of the hills or the mountains. But the trees were uprooted. And with the burden of the living being were hurled into the uh, seating billows. And then it describes, I mean, the description is really, really very long in this chapter. And it is really, you can really paint what you can really read, but it is, it also mentioned in this book, it is something that is not going to be describable by a human mere word. Now, the question is why Jesus is comparing what was just happened at the day of Noah and then to his soon second coming. And you know, if you remember, Jesus is also mentioned that can only one person can be exist when he is coming back. I mean, one faithful person. As it were not during the Noah's time, when he was just preaching for 120 years, and, but nobody will going to give any heed or any hear to him. And then I will just go back uh, and then I will going to read from the he, from the book of um, from the book of Hebrew chapter eleven. Then I will going to read verse seven. Hebrews chapter eleven and verse seven. Then it reads, by faith. Noah being divinely, wa divinely warning of the things not yet seen. Moved with a godly fear, prepared the ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and become heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. And then if we go back to the book of uh, Second Peter as well, and this is going to be chapter 3 and verse 11 and 12, and this is how it reads about, about Noah. This is Second Peter and then chapter 3 and verse 11. It reads, Therefore, since all these things would be dissolved, what manner of the person ought to be in the holy conduct and godliness? looking and hasting the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the element will be melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth in which the righteous will dwell. And so this is something that was just mentioned here, that when Jesus comes, and there are a lot of descriptions in the Bible and what will going to be happen. And one of those descriptions is in the book of Thessalonians, and this is chapter 4 and verse 16, which describe about the coming of Jesus Christ, where so many people are really hiding. Um, uh, late, uh, this is actually in the book of Revelation. And uh, those people who didn't believe in him, 
is really run away from his presence, even seeking for the stone to be fall upon them. You know, the main reason that Jesus was just comparing the days of his soon second coming to the days of Noah is that they do have so many common uh, characteristics between our time and then in the Noah's time. And people are really uh, not believing in God, even if they believe in God, and then they are half-hearted people. And then it is also in the day of Noah when this polygamy is going to be started on the face of the earth. And then you can see so many things is happened at that time. And then that is when God was just planning this. But before the plan implements, he sent one person to give a warning. I think we are also living in the same time where because before the, the, second, the second coming of Jesus Christ, and then God gave us this warning that the time is really approaching very fast. And that we have to make our walking in line with Jesus Christ. And then I would like to read another uh, verse as well from the, this time it is in the first Peter. And then this is... Uh, I will going to read First um, Peter, this chapter three, and then I will going to read verse 10, 11, 12. And then I will going to jump to verse 15. It says, "I will going to read from uh, uh, verse nine, not returning evil for evil or revealing for revealing." <laughs> But on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit the blessing for he who would love life and see the good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his sleep from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And verse 13 says, And who is who will harm you if you become a follower of what is good? So, this is like, I think, it is a good counsel for each and every one of us that how we will going to live in the end time and how the Christian experience will looks like at the end time. Maybe there is a one verse that I would like to read, and this is uh, from the book of Luke. Uh, I think it is a chapter... Um, let me find... This is, uh, yeah, 21 and 36. Yeah. I, will get, I think this is a good counsel for each and every one of us. It says, uh, Luke 21 and verse 36, Watch therefore and pray always that you might be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So I think this is a, a really good counsel for each and every one of us. But now the center of my message this morning 
is what has been recorded in the Matthew chapter 24 and this chapter, uh, verse 40 and 41, when Jesus was describing at the end time, when he is coming a second time, there is only two groups of people that, he, that will going to be existed in this world. Either those people who believe in him or those people who are believing in, not in him. So there are only people in two baskets. One person cannot be in, two, in those two baskets. Either it can be in one in the first one or either in the second one. And so at that time, and one will going to be taken and then one will going to be left. And this is also what also happened and uh, uh, as it has been also mentioned in the book of Thessalonians. So, uh, dear brothers and sisters, and this morning, what Jesus was just mentioning in the book of Matthew chapter 24 is really very crucial for our time. Especially, this has been recorded for us so that we will gain to learn what will happen in the Old Testament, and then what was Jesus was just saying, and then to prepare for his soon second coming. That also implies that we will not going to have any excuses because we do have history that was already mentioned in the Old Testament. We do have also records for in the New Testament. And then what excuses could we will going to give? And so I think that's also why and this book has been also given to us so that we will going to be prepared for his soon second coming. And this is my prayer that we all will going to be prepared and as we listen to this gospel and then to receive him in the air as it has been mentioned in the book of Thessalonians. May the Lord God help us. Amen. And this morning we are so grateful. And thank you so much for um, giving us this example in the Bible to teach us how we should live our life in this earth before your soon second coming. And then we know, and the Bible also mentioned that there is a great destruction in your soon second coming. When people believe in you will be rain thousand years. And this evening it is our prayer that we, your Holy Spirit, equip us and prepare us for your soon second coming. And the please, Lord, Forgive our sins and then help us to always overcome the challenges and then so many struggles that we have in life that detach our life from you. And this morning, and thank you so much for uh, giving us this lesson and help us to experience it in our life. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.